All right, guys. So sitting here, or I was lying down in bed after doing a lot of the JCBD split, uh, and this topic came to mind, and I knew there was a reason I was thinking about some related topics over the last couple of days, um, last couple of nights, actually. It's getting kind of cold around here, and uh, when I step out for a smoke, occasionally at night, after a uh, fantastic meal, I've been eating too damn much these days. <laughs> uh, this area I'm in is the fucking hood, okay? But even the hood has some good things, and it has this so-called green belt, which is littered with trash and all that. But at night, when it's cool, pollution's less. Um, that green belt is actually sort of like a mini forest or some. I mean, it's not really a forest, although monkeys show up in there all the time, peacocks show up in there, but... I was reminded of this one time, which I wrote about, I keep getting reminded, uh, back in 2009, where... Ah, uh, shit. Got... It's amazing what you notice after the splits. I had some very unhealthy snacks there. Anyway. Uh, so that trip was uh, a trip that I took in 2009. Uh, I've chronicled my other trips online, but that one, I don't know if I have. Uh, this trip was done in a car, in an old car, which, which uh, you know, didn't have any safety measures, nothing. And if you've seen any YouTube documentaries about driving in India and most dangerous roads in the world, well, we were on one pretty close to not the most dangerous, which was which is a lot higher, but in the mountains in the Himalayas, one of my favorite places in the entire fucking world. Back then, I was still married and stuff, and um, so this was two thousand and nine. Uh, and now I'm the sort of guy that, like one of my ex's grandfathers, I go by the fucking maps that I've printed out or my GPS and any deviation, I get pissed off. I still remember, I still remember back in 99, my ex wanted to go to, I believe it was that beach in Florida with white sand, you know, literally white sand. And, uh, you know, we were on our way back from Crystal Springs and it wasn't on the way, and pop, I got so fucking pissed off, man. Anyway, lost my way, couldn't find, I guess because we deviated from the map, map quest back then. Anyway, what happened during this trip in 2009 in India is that the road that I chose was closed, and uh, they had to take an alternate, alternate route. Uh, we did that, but we got lost, and long story short, this is a part of the country where the famous hunter, Jim Corbett, Corbett, he wrote those, you know, Rudyard Kipling, Jim Corbett, famous hunters, famous writers, great guys, you know, they wrote about the tigers and the times where India, you know, the entire central portion of India was nothing but tigers, you know. I uh, still, in that part of India, there's still a substantial portion of tigers, but like 2% of what it used to be. Man, these Maharajas that fucking kill the tigers, it's bullshit, you know. They used to get on elephants and completely surround the tigers. Like, if you want to prove you're a real man, man, I mean, then fucking hunt the tiger on foot. Okay, you got a rifle, the tiger's got its own weaponry, but do it that way. You know, don't fucking get on an elephant and then you have ten, ten people around you, know, around you on bigger elephants. Then you have people in front of you beating the drums. I mean, that's just an unfair, uneven battle. And that's pathetic. It doesn't prove you're a real man. It just proves you're a fucking loser. And these men would then hang the tigers up and as trophies or whatever. Again, if you hunt the damn thing, at least hunt it. I ain't got nothing against hunting, you know, legal hunting or whatever. But there's a difference between hunting an animal and sort of fucking uh, you and, and, and just having it set up so anybody can just come and pull the trigger. That's bullshit. But these Maharajas, they did just that. And so India's tiger population just declined dramatically, you know. Jim Corbett was actually brought in to uh, 
because a lot of the tigers were turning man eaters at that time because uh, there were too many of them or whatever, and he was brought in to control that problem. These fucking Maharajas never caught the fucking man eaters, okay? Either the leopards or so much for kings. But, um, but he, and many people don't know this, just because he was white and a foreigner, you know, he actually advocated, he loved India, and he loved tigers in India. And he made the statement, the tiger is a true gentleman. You could walk right past it if, if you're sleeping in the jungle, which he used to as a little kid. He grew up in the Indian jungles uh, back when India was still under Britain. Uh, that tiger is going to just walk past you. It's not going to disturb you. It's, and, and, and he's right. And anyway, in 2009, so we were in that part of the country. And fuck, man, we got lost and or... You know, uh, and I still remember it was dark. It was like, I don't know if you've seen Rambo First Blood Part 1, you know, the streams and all that. So you had that setting. But at the back of your mind, you knew there's tigers and leopards around, you know, and it was all hilly, the roads, most dangerous. One falls, literally one falls a turn, and you're plummeting down buzzily in the feet. Man, I still remember having to back up. I still remember looking at all these other Indian guys just driving on that road like it was nothing. And I was fucking shitting my pants, literally. Uh, then we finally reached where we had to. Then a couple of days later, we went to this orchard or, orchard, or, or orchard, well, whatever they called it. The name was... <laughs> it was uh, and uh, they had the sign out there that, you know, plenty of snakes around and stuff. And But it, was, it wasn't it was jungle. It was open. They were growing a lot of good stuff. Uh, but right at the periphery of that place, the jungle started, you know. I remember walking maybe a foot, a couple of feet inside the jungle. I still remember the feeling of that jungle literally encircling me. I could feel eyes on me. All right. Now, that that is that kind of a jungle. And at the back of your mind, you got this thing that, there's wild animals there. And of course, my ex wasn't helping. She was like, oh, they, they must, you know, they get nothing to eat, these animals, this and that. And, uh, fuck, I was scared. Fast forward to now, uh, I would welcome being in that fucking jungle. You know, I would literally seek out whatever eyes are looking at me. Because part of the training I do these days, which I don't talk about a lot, is, um, have you ever woken up in the night in utter fucking darkness and walls closing in around you? I don't mean because you had a nightmare. I don't mean because you don't sleep well. None of that. Just, you know, and then, and you know, you wake up in pitch darkness. You don't know which way to turn. And a lot of us have. And for me these days, when I do that, I used to be, you know, all my life, not petrified, but I used to freak out when that happened. Because in India, you have all these park cuts and stuff growing up. But these days, you know. It's like another opportunity to fight in the dark, to live in the dark in the sense that if you've seen Bloodsport, the original movie, uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme, he's, he's blindfolded, he's serving tea, and he has to literally sense the emotion. That just made his eyesight even stronger because, but it was a test because when one form of sense is taken away, then you naturally challenge yourself to depend on the other sense, okay? Now, what does all this have to do with this money power, which is the title of this video? Well, back then, you know, had a nice cushy job, so-called family, this and that, you know, lots and lots of money, you know, <laughs> easy fucking job. But I was fat, I was out of shape. I couldn't, I couldn't fucking fight, even though I had some knowledge on it. Uh, and it's different when when you're in shape and I've said this when you have that core that corrugated the corrugated core when you when, when 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 you're really strong internally mentally and physically not just one and then people feel it you feel it your confidence level and for me this has always been the case my confidence skyrockets when I'm in shape, even if nothing else is working for me, you know, at that point. And a lot of you are like that. I mean, it's natural. Uh, uh, so I was thinking, you know, 
right now I got this business that is thriving. You know, it's making money. Now, I was thinking about, you know, if I had both the job and that, and I'm not saying I, I'm not going to work a fucking job, but uh, I'm just saying if. And I was like, no way, no fucking way. What I had to go through to get this business to where it is, and it's it. We're just starting, you know, day one, you know, and uh, what I still have to go through and the way that I keep, even though I don't have to, I keep challenging myself. Like this morning, I didn't just fall into the side splits. I made sure to touch my forehead to the to my knee when doing so. It's just another way to challenge myself. Uh, it's just another way to keep my muscles guessing. And so over the past couple of nights, I've been thinking, man, I wish I could go into that forest, uh, which is right, or that green belt, they call it, uh, Nah, it's all fenced off with barbed wire and stuff. That doesn't stop the fucking monkeys and peacocks and all kinds of stuff showing up where in the hood. But I was thinking, you know, if, if I had the opportunity to act now, how I would react completely differently, man. I mean, I was never living a cuckolded life like a lot of guys do. But when you're not in shape, when you're, you know, dependent on a fucking paycheck, when you're, if, no matter how cushy that job is, when you're quote unquote civilized, have a so called family and all this that so called supports and loves you until your money runs out, <laughs> and then you'll see their true colors. Uh, I was thinking about the difference in mentality, and so money is power. A lot of people say this, right? Is it really fucking power? Your real power comes from you, man. It comes from you internally. Money, I've often said, is just a fucking medium. You know, it's energy that flows to the right people, okay? And uh, I just gave you a real-life example of uh, for a couple of them of uh, that. A lot of people chase money. Napoleon Hill wrote about in his book, Think and Grow Rich, about how the way to get a lot of money, visualize this, that, and all that, but everything I talk about. But one of the things is... It's like attracting a woman. If you chase that woman, she's not even not only not going to give you the time of day, but she's going to run away from you, repel. That's a natural law. It's not so much the law of attraction. I call it the law of repulsion. Okay, uh, and 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 a lot of guys, most guys today are chasing women like they're, and for me, the other way. Even if a woman comes into my life, I mean, I, because I don't want a woman in my life. All right. It's that simple. And she does, she does, but I don't really want it. And they can sense that, you know, which, but that only comes, that sort of confidence, mental confidence only comes from truly being in shape. I mean, I'm, I am in better shape than most guys. I work my ass for, off for it. I continue to. And most girls. Most girls around here are fucking fat, their stomachs, and ah, it's just, I did that video on people have no pride in their fucking bodies, and they don't. So they can sense that too, but I guess the point I'm making is that the mental and the physical works together. If you're in superb shape, you're doing all the right things physically, but mentally you're not right, then it ain't gonna work. That confidence, that inner, that, that subconscious inner vibe, which really affects other people, it ain't gonna. It ain't gonna be there if you're mentally okay, but physically a uh, lard ass, or physically not fit, or can't do the things you want to do, or you know stuff like falling into the splits, doing pull ups. Well, then that confidence is not gonna be there. You could have all the fucking money in the world. It, you might even have worked for it, but chances are, if you worked, if you've actually started a business, if you've actually worked for your money, if you've taken the fucking hits, if you've been through all that, you know, uh, if you've, if you've, if, then chances are, uh, a lot of people talk about, oh, I'm running a business. Well, who the fuck started that business? The person that started it is the real pioneer, the real entrepreneur. The real the guy that went through all the highs, the lows. I mean, you got to do it to truly understand what I'm talking about. Um, starting a business is and, and running it is so much more than just financials. It's so much more than just operations. Being an entrepreneur takes a lot, man. <laughs> it, 
If you're a true entrepreneur, you you will get fucking beat to your knees in ways you never imagined possible. You could take all the precautions in the world, but like Napoleon Hill wrote about and think it grow rich. Everybody gets put through very severe tests, and he wrote about it in different language. The vast majority of people don't pass the test. Those that don't pass it simply don't make the grade. He wrote about this, and I remember the line, when you finally arrive, the world congratulates you and says, voila, I know you could always do it. Until that point, though, <laughs> and he wrote about that, you know, results, like I keep saying, speak it's the loudest, and mind speak, life-wise, business-wise, fitness-wise. Anyway, my point is this, for a lot of you thinking money is power, <laughs> I mean, you can buy people with money, you can buy things with money, you can do a lot of things with your money, but until and unless you got that internal energy going, you're never going to be truly powerful. You know, true power comes from within. It comes from your energy. It has nothing at all to do with money. It attracts money, yes. But I'm going to finish this off, and if you're a guy or a girl, you'll understand this. A lot of women flock around successful men. Why? People say because they have money. No, it's not just that. It's not just that they have money. It's the perceived notion that money equates to power. Women really like the power. Okay? Uh, I don't care if that's fans or what it is, but it's a fact. It's not so much the money they're chasing, it's the power. In my own experiences, uh, you could be this alpha male with no money or whatever, but if you have something inside of you that they truly want, they're going to, you know, and then I've, exper- I've, I've told you all about, you know, my own experiences in that regard. Even when I had no fucking money, I had women chasing me all the, t- all over the place. It had nothing to do with my looks or anything of that nature, you know. Um... The money, I mean, I, man, every time I do, I live in a fucking, you know, my ex, I mean, she loves these doorbells ringing, and it's just so fucking aggravating. Anyway, some, somebody was playing rag tag on the doorbell, they're just constantly stupid. I mean, where I live, there's no fucking doorbell at all, you know, but these people don't get it around me, uh, or some of these people. Anyway, so that, that should answer is money truly power? Okay, think about that. And uh, I was gonna do a written post on this, but maybe I will. See y'all later.